want to tell you about one man today, uh, a man that uh, is very courageous, a man named Gao Zhezheng. And I want to tell you about him because it is so important for me to do so. He represents what China could be, a China which has democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. He has kindled the light of hope for many people who are suffering under this white terror.我不知道你名字，但是只要是共产党打压的人，他一定是好人。哗的一群老人很鼓掌。你要是爸爸来了，你想跟他说什么？如果你见到爸爸，我一直都做梦，然后梦见我爸爸就是死掉了。然后那个
因为我们，呃，觉得就是首先从一个角度来讲，我不能脱离和穷人的接触，这是我了解中国社会底层的一个最直接的管道。嗯、对。呃，另外呢，我自己就是穷人出身。第三个呢，是我个性，我的个性呢，听了这些一些山穷水尽这些人来求助的时候。他流泪的过程，恰恰又是我的流泪过程。那我又我有时候就是，他找我的过程啊，加上我的个性，实际上使得你接受了这么一种结果。In 2000, Gao and his family moved to Beijing. A year later, he was named one of China's top ten lawyers in a national legal debate competition sponsored by the Ministry of Justice. Soon after, Gao founded his own law firm. Despite these successes, something didn't feel right. Because this is Easter Day, my husband came home late. Yes, we also were waiting for him to come back. But when he came home, he said he was upset. I saw his mood was upset. I said, why? He said, I was walking on the street today. I saw a light in the street. I felt that I was walking on the street. I was walking on the street. 我这是割开的，我跟他是脱，我是跟他是分层的啊，我融入不到这个社会当中。他说，因为我挣的钱越多，我的我的当时的苦难越多，所以呢，我就我就知道，真的，我真是知道，在每一个案子中呢，他就每每一个当事人的案子呢，他就投入了非常大的感情和一种责任，他感觉呢呢，作为当事人是非常的不容易了，已经已经受难了啊。如果我律师再没有做好，再把他的诉讼权利给丢失了，就把这一家人都给毁了。嗯，所以他就非常的认真负责。Knowing well the dangers of following such a path, Gao chose to work more on defending the rights of people who had been treated unjustly by the government. In some cases, he tried seeking compensation for victims of forced demolitions. But in a country where the Chinese Communist Party controls the courts, he lost all of the cases of this kind because they touched on the vested interests of powerful government officials and businessmen. In July 2004, Gao and fellow attorney Zhu Zhouhu began working on a case in Gao's hometown of Yulin, in Shanxi Province. The government took over the oil fields. That were run by small investors with little compensation. Over 60,000 investors suffered losses, many of them falling into severe debt. A few dared to stand up and defend their rights by suing the local government, but they were detained by police, and some of them were sentenced to prison. Attorney Zhu Zhouhu, who tried to represent them, was also detained. He was eventually released. After Gao's relentless efforts to rescue his colleague,、uh, many of the people who staff the courts, the prosecutor's office, the legal profession,、uh, and academic、uh, work and、uh, lawyers, etc., I think they know that they're losing the struggle to make China more a country under law than a country simply using law when it's convenient for the leader's、uh, repression or economic. Uh, activity. Uh, the depressing realities he encountered, and the stubborn unfairness of the Chinese judicial system, often gave Gao a sense of sadness and helplessness. At times, he considered switching professions, but then he found he couldn't turn his back on the people coming to him in desperate need of help. We first entered this field, we should say we were hopeful and optimistic, thinking that. 能能能为中国的社会进步、改变中国社会尽一些微薄之力。后来才发现，你你树立这种目标的时候，对你是多么的危险，呃，也给你招致了许许多多的麻烦。我现在的需要呢，调整在了我没有力量改变社会了，但是我能更偶然的改变一些个体的身身边的事，所以我只能就这样做了。At the end of November 2004, relatives of Huang Wei, a resident of Shijiazhuang in Hebei Province. Sent Gao's office a request for representation. Huang Wei is a Falun Gong practitioner, and actually, it was one of the first Falun Gong cases that Gao Zhishang took.、Um, he was just a simple, ordinary Chinese man who happened to practice Falun Gong. And one day, he was dropping his child off at kindergarten, and all of a sudden, four thugs came out and abducted him. And they took him to a detention center and then sent him to a three years in a labor camp. And he had no trial; he had no chance to appeal. 
and he hadn't really committed any crime. The only reason he was sent there was because the authorities found out that he practiced Falun Gong. Falun Gong is a meditation practice that combines physical exercises with spiritual teachings. In the 1990s, it spread by word of mouth in Chinese society as people experienced health benefits and other positive impacts of the practice on their lives. By 1999, it had attracted over 70 million Chinese. At that point, the Communist Party, with its intolerance of independent thought and civil society groups, began to view Falun Gong's popularity as a threat to its power. Party leaders banned the practice and unleashed a brutal and systematic campaign to stamp it out. The Falun Gong are by far the most victimized group in China. They, according to the UN Rapporteur on Torture, they represent two-thirds of the torture victims in China. And the next largest group are the Uyghurs, they're at 11%, and everybody else is single digit. They are, as well, by far the largest group in arbitrary detention uh, in, in the re-education through labor camps. As Gao tried to represent Huang Wei and file for a judicial review, he discovered that the regime had blocked all avenues of legal appeal for people who practice Falun Gong. Left with no alternative, he wrote an open letter to Wu Bangguo, chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, describing his encounters with several judges. An administrative judge by the name of Miao examined the documents and said, we have received orders from above indicating that when it comes to Falun Gong, no case can be accepted and no document can be issued. A judge who they called the presiding judge came in. The judge pointed at us and said, you are probably not party members and you probably haven't studied the directives of the National Congress. Are you aware that lawyers aren't allowed to take cases like this? The court belongs to the Chinese Communist Party and so do the laws. There are currently orders from above to reject these cases and that's the end of it. Go talk to whoever you like and go file your case wherever you like. We don't care. At the time, there were very few lawyers who dared to represent Falun Gong practitioners openly in China. Other than Gao, another renowned attorney who did so was Guo Guoting. Because of that, Guo's license to practice law was revoked. He was placed under tight surveillance and harassed by the police. Eventually, he was forced into exile overseas. Wo 第二个事例呢就是陈光辉被八年了他已经被打成了植物人就是在苏州医学院的医院那么我呢到医院去见他呢就发现什么呢他已经是植物人居然公安呢还二十四小时监控那我呢是当时是采取了一个就是不是好像
In July, he provided free legal assistance to Tsai Zhuohua, a Christian pastor in Beijing. Tsai had been arrested for printing and giving Bibles to house church members. Also in July, villagers in Taishu in Guangdong province tried to recall their local officials based on China's law for organizing village committees. The authorities responded with riot police, violent beatings, and arrests of protest leaders. Guo Feishong, an activist assisting the villagers, was also arrested, and Gao took his case pro bono. Then, in October, Gao traveled to Shandong province. He interviewed dozens of Falun Gong practitioners who had been persecuted by the regime. On October 18th, he published an open letter to China's top leaders, Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao, relaying the findings of his investigation and calling on them to end the campaign against Falun Gong. Within days, the regime's security agents turned their attention to Gao. The电话里面告诉我，你高智深知道了很多真相，我们知道的真相也不少。比方说，你的孩子在哪里上学，每天做什么车？那我们就开始保持了警惕。就在二十号早晨，天不亮，送孩子上学的时候，我们发现一些异
Gao's open letter received an enthusiastic response from ordinary citizens across the country. Persecuted Falun Gong practitioners wrote letters inviting him to their areas to learn more about their situation. On November 29th, together with his friend Zhao Guobiao, a journalism professor from Peking University, Gao successfully shook off the secret police that were following him. The pair then traveled to Shandong, Liaoning, and Jilin provinces. They conducted a 17-day-long fact-finding investigation into the persecution of Falun Gong by the Chinese Communist Party. On December 12th, in a cold room in Changchun city of Jilin province, Gao wrote another open letter to Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao, the leaders of the communist regime. Mr. Hu, Mr. Wen, and all fellow Chinese, it is time for every one of us to take a good, hard look at ourselves. In the history of the world, never has such a huge group of people suffered such severe and long-term persecution during peacetime, simply on account of their faith. This disaster has cost thousands of precious, innocent people their lives and has deprived hundreds of thousands of their freedom. This utterly inhumane persecution has caused over 100 million Falun Gong followers and their families to suffer. How absurd, treacherous, and immoral this is. It is an onslaught against the Chinese people, civilization itself, and the very moral fabric of the world. I would like to stress that if this evil crime does not stop, then the day when Chinese society is stable and harmonious will never come. The day after publishing the open letter, Gao also published a statement declaring his withdrawal from the Communist Party in the Epoch Times, an independent Chinese newspaper based in the United States. He called it the proudest day of my life. Gao's speaking out for Falun Gong and withdrawing from the Communist Party touched the party's most sensitive nerves. The regime reacted with tighter surveillance and ever-increasing threats. This Eleven days later, Gao was driving home, and there were very few cars on the road. Suddenly, the car in front of him, whose license plates were covered with newspaper, came to a halt. Gao almost crashed into the back of that car, but slammed on the brakes just in time. He got out of his car and tried to check the license plate at the front of the car he'd almost hit. The driver then suddenly hit the gas and tried to run him over. Gao quickly jumped into a nearby flower bed to escape. 
As the car drove away, its license plate was exposed. It read capital EB8233. At that moment, he realized something. This was the same number as one of the secret police cars that had been following him for the past few weeks. To protest the Communist Party's growing suppression of civil rights activists, Gao initiated a hunger strike movement in early 2006. Each day, a different set of people would fast for 24 hours, with the hunger strike rotating daily from group to group. Chinese people from all over the world followed. That he was someone different. He was another league of activists or league of dissident. Someone who was really able to bring together people from different walks of life and unify the activist community around him. And I think that that's exactly what the Chinese government sees too, and that's why they're so afraid of him. With constant police harassment, making it impossible to live a normal life. Gao left home in March 2006 and traveled around China for six months. Wherever he went, people would approach him to express their support and admiration, ignoring the risk of punishment by the secret police who were never far behind. On April 15th, Gao and a friend arrived in Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province in the southwest. Several supporters were waiting for them. 一下火车就一出站口不到就在我跑的时候突然对面又闯过来一个年轻人给我塞了一盘那个到处都能买到的甘地钻年轻人还头还没有转过身还没有转过去又遭到了中国特务的保留打完以后又给押走了 Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and agree to the resolution H. Conrad 365 Meanwhile, recognition of Gao's work and courage was also growing outside China Concurrent resolution urging the government of China to reinstate all licenses of Gao Ger Sheng and his law firm, remove all... Lawyers like Gao Jingcheng, who dare to follow the law and represent clients, are harassed, threatened, beaten, forbidden Quote, to practice... Moral courage and imprisoned. is a rarer commodity than bravery in battle or great intelligence. Yet it is the one essential, vital quality for those who seek to change the world, which yields most painfully to change." End quote. Madam Speaker, Chinese human rights lawyer Gao Zhusheng is precisely the type of individual Robert Kennedy had in mind 40 years ago in Cape Town. Two months later, on June 4, 2006, European Parliament Vice President Edward McMillan Scott called Gao. We spoke for four hours about the situation in China, his own perceptions of the persecution of Falun Gong, which he'd investigated the year before. Um, bearing in mind he's a Christian, he um, um, shared some thoughts with me about his own religious feelings 
and uh, about the future of China. I asked whether he was aware that by having contact with me, he was exposing himself to risk, and he said he was aware of the risk. And I think what it shows is the extraordinary courage of people who know exactly what the regime can do. Back in China, Gao was in Shandong province, visiting his sister and brother-in-law who was dying of cancer. It was August 15, 2006, more than 10 months since secret police had started following him. That day, police broke in and took him away.全部是光着膀子 Almost at the same time, Gao's family in Beijing was also ambushed. Lilunian 我说我不去派出所在我嘴巴上缠了几圈缠了几圈以后把我拖到地下以后呢两个汉就踩到我两边腿肚子上就让我跪在地上跪下以后就开始那个蒙眼睛拿那个黄胶带又在眼睛上蒙了几层然后套
they left the family with only a television set and 300 Chinese yuan in cash, about $40. A team of policemen then moved into their apartment to monitor his wife and two children around the clock. The kids were 13 and two years old at the time. The attack on Gao and his acquaintances was a carefully choreographed plan executed nationwide. On the same day Gao was abducted, police officers surrounded the homes of his relatives in his hometown in Shanxi while dozens of suspicious people began following his in-laws in Xinjiang. Within days of Gao's abduction, numerous fellow human rights advocates who had joined the hunger strike movement were either put under house arrest or taken away by police. In Hong Kong, unidentified thugs beat Albert Ho, a member of the Legislative Council and ardent advocate for the hunger strike Gao initiated, causing him to be hospitalized. Within a month, civil rights activist Guo Feishong from Guangdong, writer Li Hong from Zhejiang, and Chinese Democracy Party member Chen Shu Qing were all arrested. At the detention center, Gao was deprived of sleep for four or five days. At any given moment, he would either be forced to sit on a hard surface or be chained to an iron chair and interrogated with strong light beams in his face. To protest the mistreatment, Gao went on a hunger strike. After three days, an interrogator whose last name was Xiao came to see him. You October 6 was the Mid-Autumn Festival that year. It was the 53rd day since Gao had been abducted. It was also Gong He's birthday. That day, the Beijing Public Security Bureau brought Gong He to the detention center to see Gao. It was the first time they had met since he had been taken away. The police had put a lot of pressure on Gong He to persuade Gao to surrender. Tabushu 
，你你肯定清楚我为什么不想知道。他说：“小高，我求你了，你就听我一句话，你就从现在起，你什么都不要想，什么都不要想了，就为我和孩子活上几年，行不行？我没有做任何思考，我说耿和行，没有问题。”我说，任何价值都不能在你的这个要求之上，而你的这个要求是最低最低。你是对孩子的父亲、对你的丈夫提出这样的要求，为你们活几年没有问题。从现在起，我就为你们活着。跟十月六号见面就是谈了这么一点内容。他临走的时候告诉。说了一句说：“你给他们说一说，看能不能给我们弄一点生活费。”这句话透露了很多信息，你知道吧？这最简单的一句话，把所有他们在外面的处境全部勾画清楚。A month later, the situation took a turn for the worse. On the morning of November fourteenth. The secret police who were following Gung Ha beat her up on the street after she asked them to stay a little further away. When she got home, she called Hu Jia, a Beijing activist and close friend, and told him what had happened. At the detention center, Gao was informed of the attack. That night, he refused to have dinner. Then he asked to meet with the interrogators. You want to do what? Now, start to tell me. Admit. 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 Your妻子和孩子，只要说你的悔罪书我们满意了，妻子和孩子就能得到五千块钱的生活费，不少吧？我说没有问题，没有问题。我说写东西对我来讲是一个技术过程。我说再不讨价还价，只要我的妻子
我内心的痛苦程度，验证了。我的良知还没有受到了大的伤害，因为我那段时间内心很痛苦。Beatings, sleep deprivation, interrogation, humiliation, and being chained in a painful position for 590 hours could not break Gao's will, but he couldn't stand to see his family being tormented. 为罪书，我知道伤害了很多人。伤害了很多我相信的人，伤害了很多我原本想保护他们的人，而且给他们提供了一个永久性的性的利用的东西，也给那些做梦。都想给中共卸谄媚的那些人提供了永久性的武器。我自己不是一种虚荣，不是一种完全的爱面子，但是这个东西，在我人格深处划了一行。On December 12, 2006, Gao was tried in secret at Beijing No. 1 Intermediate People's Court. His family was not notified, and his defense attorney was not present. He was found guilty of subversion and given a suspended three-year sentence with five years probation. Ten days later, Gao was released. He had been in custody for over four months. It was a bittersweet family reunion. At the suggestion of his daughter Gaga, the family drove to a restaurant to celebrate. In the road, actually, our heads are all black. Why? I just think that yesterday I was in the jail. You can understand? I was in the jail yesterday. 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 你你在这之前你在干什么了？你怎么了都没有去想，只是感觉到哟，全家在一起就去吃饭啊，这么状态。所以我们其实一在路上呢，这一路还都没讲话，没讲话，都很都很沉闷，都不知道在不知道好像是话要从哪样开始那种感觉。然后这时候我们家皮特说了一句话，皮特说他是，爸爸是不是不好？不好的日子一天一天过去了，以后就是好日子，这么说的。但是高志生重复的过程把它调整顺了。高志说的，是的，不好的日子过去了，从现在开始一天一天是，从现在是一天一天的是好日子。是高志生给他倒了一下。哎呀，当时我们家的感觉就是我们，我我们每个人在，每个人在心里说的这句话：不好的日子一天，不不好的日子过去了，从现在开始起就是好日子了。高生就说：“是的，从爸爸从爸爸现在开始带你们过好日子。” A few days after he returned home, Gao was abducted again and forcefully removed from Beijing. He was held incommunicado. Meanwhile, the repentant statement was publicized and drew different reactions and speculation, including disappointment from those who read it. Yet, as Chinese New Year approached in February 2007, many people still sent their greetings to Gao. 那么，尽管是见不到他，尽管是我也很难有把握说把这个音讯至今能让他知道，但是我还是想要说，就是给他道贺一声，啊，新年好吧。因为过去的这一年对他家里来讲是最黑暗的一年，我希望从此就拨云见日了。In April 2007, Gao was released and returned home to Beijing. On April 6th, his friend Hu Jia received a phone call from him. 
This was the first time the two had spoken since Gao was abducted in August of the previous year. During his conversation with Hu Jia, Gao read out a letter he had written to Hu and his wife Tsung Jin Yen, a well-known blogger, in which he described in detail the abuse he was subjected to in detention. Chinwardia. 最后就是他们做出让。Even as Gao was under constant surveillance and forced to give up his legal defense work, his influence was still being felt. Other lawyers courageously picked up where he left off, trying to defend Falun Gong practitioners in court. At the end of April 2007, in Shijiazhuang, a city 400 miles from Beijing, Six lawyers disregarded the regime's threats and presented a historic defense of freedom of religion before a Chinese court. They defended Wang Bo and her parents, who were being put on trial for practicing Falun Gong and distributing information about the human rights abuses suffered by practitioners. This was the first time that Chinese lawyers had overcome the obstacles set by the Communist Party and argued against the unlawful persecution of Falun Gong in court. Wang Bo and her parents were ultimately sentenced to prison despite the lawyer's efforts. But a path had been opened. Since then, dozens of Chinese lawyers have pleaded the innocence of Falun Gong practitioners in court. In any society, there are always some people, good people, and they are willing to uh, sacrifice for other people's, all the people's uh, uh, interest or their justice. Um, so, but in many cases, especially in China, uh, they need to find a, a direction or a way to do that. And I think Gao Zisheng um, set up an example and point out in Chinese society, the most uh, injustice is the persecution of Falun Gong. So if you want to bring justice to the society, you have to face Falun Gong issue. Meanwhile, in July 2007, a reporter from New Tang Dynasty Television, an independent Chinese station based in the United States, took a risk and visited Gao at his home. This 这不是真实。事实上，当条件具备的时候，我还是走进了厨房。<笑> From the footage, one can see a Gao with more smiles and restored confidence. Every day, besides helping with the housework, he focused on reading, thinking, and writing. <laughs>
，中国需要什么样的政府？然后这是美国之前获得的变化。这个书比较，要不要人家讲？ On September 8, 2007, Gao published a declaration in the Epoch Times nullifying his repentant statement and rejecting all of the communist regime's charges against him. Two weeks later, Gao's open letter to the U.S. Congress was published. Today, as we approach the Beijing Olympic Games, I ask you to pay attention to the ongoing human rights disaster in China and wish you to forward my appeal to the whole world. I ask you to seriously consider the outlook of morality, justice, and humanity for today's mankind, as well as to what extent such values are undermined in China. In a world where the mainstream political forces value profit above everything else, where morality is sneered at, we tried in vain to urge the International Olympic Committee to perform its duties. But still, I choose to express myself in a way that has almost led to the annihilation of my whole family. I choose to present to the international community what is happening in China, the vivid scenes going on in parallel with the preparations for the Olympic Games, but that are totally against the Olympic spirit. Though at this moment, people are busy congratulating themselves on what they have gained from the coming Olympic Games. I choose to do so, despite the danger it may bring to myself, because I consider it my obligation as a human being and as a Chinese person. But Gao's appeal may have come too late. On September 6th, as he was drafting this open letter during the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Meeting in Sydney, Hu Jintao, the Chinese Communist Party General Secretary, invited U.S. President George W. Bush to come to Beijing to watch the Olympic Games. Bush accepted the invitation. And once again, he extended an invitation to me and Lauren, our family, to come to the Olympics. And of course, I was uh, anxious to accept. For writing his open letter to the U.S. Congress, Gao was again abducted by the police, his head covered in a black hood. He was taken to a secret place. More than two months later, he returned home with scars and deteriorated health. At first, Gao didn't want to talk about his ordeal, but at his wife's urging, he eventually wrote out an account of what had happened to him in custody. Four men with electric batons began beating my head and all over my body. Nothing but the noise of the beating and my anxious breathing could be heard. I was beaten so badly that my whole body began shaking uncontrollably. I was shouted at by a guy whom I later learned was named Wang. All my clothes were pulled off, and I was totally naked. The electric shock batons were put all over me, and my whole body, my heart, lungs, and muscles began jumping under my skin uncontrollably. I was writhing on the ground in pain, trying to crawl away. Wang then shocked me in my genitals, my begging them to stop only returned laughing and more unbelievable torture. This torture continued until around noon on the third day. I don't know where I got the strength to endure, but somehow I struggled to get away from their grasp, shouting the names of my two children, Tian Yu and Gu Gu. I hit my head on the edge of the table. My voice Calling my children's names was chilling. It was extremely sad, remote, and unfamiliar. But my suicide attempt did not succeed. I thank Almighty God for this. It is He who rescued me. Gao's eyes were bleeding after he banged his head. He fell to the floor, but even then, the secret police didn't stop their brutality. 
They kept beating and shocking him with electric batons. They inserted bamboo pins into his genitals. In endless pain and under tremendous pressure from his interrogators, Gao was forced to make up stories about having had affairs with four women. After returning home, he tried to get back to a normal life. But leaving the torture behind wasn't so simple. Tadajaliba 我的心里吧也特别沉重因为呢因为高深受的这些苦呀在我脑子里面我忘不掉啊我忘不掉我尽量在他们面前我说一辈子跟他临死我毕业离之前这一步我绝对忘不了因为他你你不可能说是谁
i stanu zdrowia. We need to find a way to convince the Chinese government to tell us what has happened to Mr. Gao, what have they done with him, how do they justify it, and when, when, when will they tell us that they will release this man to be with his family and begin to accord people like Mr. Gao and others who stand up for the rights of others the same human rights that we would expect them to be given. China will be a significant... Thanks to this pressure, Gao resurfaced on March 28, 2010 after more than a year in custody without a word. A couple of days later, Bill Schiller from the Toronto Star visited Gao at his Beijing apartment. In his article, Schiller wrote, looking thinner but unbroken, Gao said he was standing down from his role as a leading dissident, but he was not walking away from his basic principles. Gao said, undoubtedly, I'll be giving up a role, but giving up a role doesn't mean giving up one's fundamental point of view. Within days, Gao disappeared again. Nine months later, in January 2011, the Associated Press published an exclusive interview they had conducted with Gao during his short period of resurfacing. In it, Gao described the torture and beatings during the year he had gone missing as the worst he had ever endured. By granting the interview, he was violating the conditions set by the authorities. But he told the journalist that if he disappeared again, the report could be published. Not long after the Associated Press report came out, an article that Gao himself had written two years earlier, titled Speaking From My Heart, was published. Gong He had smuggled it out when she left China, but she misplaced it during the journey. Two years later, it was finally found. In the article, Gao once again speaks out against the suffering of the Chinese people at the hands of a ruthless communist regime while calling for more international help for fellow democracy and human rights activists. At the end, Gao writes, the publication of this article will cause me to be kidnapped again. Kidnappings are part of my normal living now. If it comes again, then let it come. My experience with Gao Jisheng was that he stood up for justice and the rule of law, which was admirable. Uh, he was persecuted for it, which was deplorable. But, but what was uh, striking was that he stood his ground as the persecution continued and accelerated. He couldn't help but know that as he was standing up for human rights, uh, that he was going to be persecuted for it. But he did it anyways. To me, uh, well, I hope never to be in a situation uh, like a Gao Zhisheng found himself, but if I were, I would hope uh, to behave the way he did. Uh, his behavior was... Good morning, Easy.